Believe it or not, I'm onto a beauty. <laughs> Have a look at the kind of areas that I'm going to be fishing. We'll be out here early fishing that running tide. Well, it's the Friday before the Flathead Classic kicks off. I'm really excited. This is the first time that I've fished it and I've got my brother Ben, he's gonna fish it with me this year. So we're really looking forward to what's about to happen next week. I wanted to get out on the water. It's um, 7.30. I'm gonna hit it for about two hours and not really pre-fish it, but I just wanna get out and have a look at some banks really and try and get a little bit of a game plan together. Um, you've always gotta be flexible when going into a comp and it's still five, six days away. Like it's next Wednesday, today's Friday, so there's still a fair bit of time between now and then. But what I wanna do is take you through the lures and the gear that I'm gonna be using and the, the tactics that I'm gonna be using and just my approach and what I'm gonna be looking for on those uh, on the three days of the Classic. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I've just sort of got myself out into the main channel just to check on the tides straight up so I know what's gonna be happening. There's bigger tides coming. Um, and they're gonna be later in the day. So it's a bit of a funny one this year compared to years gone by where I've followed what people have been up to. Usually um, they love that run out tide during the day, but it's a filling tide and it's like a mid to late morning over the three days. So let's go and have a look, see if we can find some banks and um, get our head around what we're gonna do for the classic. So what I want to do, I want to show you just how I'm prepping and, and looking at the conditions ahead. So I'm going to take you through, hopefully you can see some of this. But I'm going to whip my phone out and um, hopefully it's not too glary. And I'll just show you my passcode and have a look at the kind of areas that I'm going to be fishing. So there's Jacob's Well, there's a whole host of sand flats and islands and things and comes all the way down here through the broad water. And you can see my blue dot there. I've just launched at the Paradise Point boat ramp, um, mainly because it's just nice and protected through here. But my plan is to go and fish some of these edges and maybe try and get away from the crowd, to be honest. Like, there's so many anglers in this, in this competition that, um, you know, you could probably tear your hair out and fish beside them all day, but I think Ben and I, what we'll do is try and hide, get out of the road and try and fish some, some water by ourselves and really enjoy our time on the water. So uh, I'm going to come out through this area here into the main area and then head down, check out some of the banks on the way south and then head up towards past Kurang Cove today and have a look up around the top of, yeah, or really the southern Morton Bay Islands. You might be able to see that there. So that's the scoping that I'm going to do in that, in that regard. Having a look forward into the, into the week ahead in terms of the winds. So today we've got, I've had a little bit of rain this morning um, and there's storms predicted tomorrow, there's changes coming and then next week, really the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is what I'm interested in looking at. So um, the winds are southeasterly on that Tuesday of about 15 knots, which I reckon is going to be great great for the conditions and it's, it's sort of easterly winds for that three days so the other thing that I'm looking at are these tide heights and the moon phases so you can see the tides like today I'm fishing or I've got out here I'm not really gonna be fishing but I've got out here and there's the smaller tide and then it's starting to level out even up over the next few days and then swap over by the Wednesday so we're fishing the big tide of the day and it's a rising tide, sort of 11.50 or midday around that and 10 o'clock on the Tuesday. So we'll be out here early fishing that running tide. And that, what that means for me, like fishing a run-in tide in the morning, I don't actually mind that because I want to be fishing up on the sand flats and just trying to fish for these bigger fish. Like, for me, it's been glide baits, those so slap sticks and the big crossfire surface lures. Um, that's the way that I really like to chase the big fish. And I know in the classic with the point system, a lot of people go after the, the numbers of smaller fish. But um, 
this is the first time I've done it and I really want to start it off in a big way so I'll, I want to go out there and just target those bigger fish and if I don't get the numbers which that's not going to happen if you're chasing those bigger fish um, I'm not really too fussed I, I want to learn it over the next few years how to get about in this area of the Gold Coast and the, the southern end of Morton Bay and work out yeah how to get numbers um, but also I'm sort of here for the big ones and I know that's what my brother's excited about hooking onto a giant so that's probably our game plan is to try and get after those bigger fish especially on the first day and if we you know if, we, if we're chewing on donuts by day two we might change our tact and try and pick up some smaller fish but uh, with the nature of the competition I reckon the way that it plays out is probably on that set you know by the end of the second day and the third day there's been so much pressure and so many lures thrown at fish that um, it's probably going to be even harder to get fish on those on those last couple of days um, there's a there's a turn of the tide I think the third day we might get the turn of the tide in the morning like the early low and then the run in but that's not really all that appealing to me I like that filling tide over flats so the only problem with the filling tide is probably that once it fills up and gets into those mangroves, the bait can get away and hide in, inside the mangroves and get off the flats. Um, so I'm going to be sort of find, trying to find banks that are that are exposed and then covered without all those mangrove line banks where the bait can get in there, um, or just be fishing that as the tide runs up. So anyway, that's that's really the plan. I've used Google Maps. If you ever go looking for you know apps to try and get some vision. I also use Ovital Map and Queensland Globe. If I'm at home I'm on the computer, I can use Queensland Globe. Um, but they're really detailed maps that you can use to scope some of your fish and some of your spots and your banks and things. But there's nothing like getting out on the water and just getting a feel for what the, what the bank and the tide heights are doing, like how much water is going to be over these banks in the next few days. And this is perfect because I've got a filling tide now um, so the banks that I'm looking for right now, I'm going to go for a hammer around these places. They're going to have about another foot of water on them. And I like to fish about two feet, two to three feet of water on these flats. So that's what I'm, I'm sort of looking for. I'm going to find some banks that are too shallow at the moment, um, really to get the boat up on and fish. But by Tuesday, they're going to have a bit more water on them in that, in that running tide, at the top of the tide. And hopefully that's where the bait's getting getting onto and moving onto and the flat are chasing them and getting after them. So let's go and do it and I'll take you through some of the gear that I've got after we've had a little bit of a look around. You're starting to get an idea of the kind of things that you've got to put up with out here on the broadwater. That bloke's fully wearing ski goggles on a jet ski. Um, so I want to take you through just some of the gear. This is what I'm going to be just checking out this morning and I'm going to be fishing like really shallow stuff um, and then going through some weed areas and just getting a feel for some lures. So let me show you what I've got. This is one of the lures that I've been um, loving the last 12 months, these big crossfires. I'm going to be fishing with that this morning. This is like a really big fish lure and it's a 195 crossfire. So I'm going to be throwing that up in around the shallows. Um, and then also areas where I've just got not a lot of, um, not a lot of weed. I'm going to be throwing this affinity series. These big glide baits and swim baits, um, especially this one from Zarek, is something that I'm really excited about. They catch really big flathead, and that's what I'm going to be going after. I'm after the big ones, um, and numbers might happen later if I'm not getting any big ones, but I'm going to throw that. I've got it on a big Dobbins Fury series um, swim baiting rod with my Corrado, and the other lures that I've got, these rip stops by Rapala, if I'm going to be fishing, there's some sections of just like sand undulating banks with little drop-offs and things. I'm going to be fishing these as well. So probably in that deeper one is the way that I'm going to go. These rip stops, they're a new lure. 
and um, they've just got like this chromey back end it just helps with their stall so using it like a jerk bait that's something I'm going to be throwing today just to check that out and test that these slap sticks um, these things are just these things are becoming famous for big flathead and I just love fishing them they're very easy to fish so I'm, I'm gonna throw them around and probably use them that might be the lure that I use the most in the classic I reckon is fishing these big slap sticks um, chasing big flathead on the flats so I've got one of those on I'm gonna test out this morning one of the other things that I want to just get a feel for is fishing amongst the weed and there's a lot of weed that's turned up uh, in the, the southern Moreton Bay area along a lot of the flats that used to be sort of more muddy flats there's a lot more weed up there now so I've bought a, a heap of these for jack fishing but I'm going to fish for uh, flathead with them these Z-Man minnows and I've just rigged it on like a snake locks um, set up so it's weedless and I can drag that through the weed another option that I've got my hands on just recently are these Biscay Shads these things are by um, Storm, these 360 GT Coastals, and they've got, they come out in like a weedless version, and they've got like a little twist lock, it's really specially designed jig head, um, so I'm just gonna go throwing those around and see how they go as well, because I think they look, they imitate a little whiting just perfectly. So through speckled weed and stuff like that, I'm gonna give those a bit of a throw around this morning. Uh, I reckon that's about it for the stuff that I want to test out but there's going to be a heap of gear that I'm going to fish over the over the course of the classic and test a lot of stuff too so um, I might take you through that after we have a little bit of a fish I'm keen as just to start fishing I've got out here to do some prep and scope some spots I've literally gone like less than a cane I'm like nah I just want to start fishing so let's go and get into that Hey mate, how are you? Good. Nice morning for it. Are you doing a YouTube or something? Yeah, just doing it. I, I run like a YouTube channel, so I'm just um, doing a, a video because I'm prepping the Flatty Classics next week. Oh, Gold yeah. Coast Flatty Classic, yeah. Oh, cool. So just doing um, like a prep video for that, yeah. yeah how do I find uh, it's called My Lure Box. My Lure Box, which is like a, you know, like a tackle box or My Lure Box, my lure box yeah. Oh, yeah. So I've just got. Oh, there's lure reviews on there and tips on on fishing, but a lot of big flathead stuff at the moment I've been doing, yeah. I can't catch a fish. Can't catch a fish. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. Do you want me to show you some of the stuff I use? Yeah. I'll give you a look. I've got a couple of guys coming, we're going out. So. Oh, right. Yeah. Where are you, are you just going for a cruise or? I'll give you a look at the stuff that I'm, I'm using, man, because it's... You just chuck them out and wind them in, don't you? There's no real... Well, there's, there's some nuances to it, if yeah. you want to get some of the better fish. But yeah. um, some of the lures that are easier to do that with, like the really easy stuff to fish with, yeah. is, is stuff like... Plastics. And, yeah. Those soft plastics. Yeah. But it's, it's rigged weedless, so you're not catching weed. Oh, okay. And it's got... Just have a look. Can you see that little... It's a snake box head, it's called. Yeah. And they come in, and, and that sort of so like the hook a, always to the top, is it? Yeah, the hook points up, yep. so that it drags through the weed a lot better. Yeah, yeah. And and they're a really easy style of fishing. I'll just grab this, mate. Might be. Coming down. Is that right? They're on their way. He's on the marina. Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's that's probably one of the best big flathead baits. Ah, oh, right, eh? Yeah, yeah. shit. Just it's a lot bigger, eh? Yeah. They're yeah. called slapsticks. Oh, uh, right, eh? Yeah. So, my lure. My lure box. My yeah. lure box. And that's got, oh, I've got a couple of hundred views on there, but the, the yeah. more recent stuff on YouTube, you'll, yeah. you'll be able to find some bigger flathead fishing and tips and that. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at that. Yeah. yeah. So, I was looking at it, and I was thinking, what's he doing talking to himself? And then I realised it was a camera. Yeah. Yeah. All right, mate. Go and get him, yeah. Go and have fun, eh? All right, mate. See ya.
This is one of the scenarios that's going to play out in the Flathead Classic because of this high tide is that there's going to be water pushing into the mangroves and there's areas where there's those pneumatophore roots that come out a little bit further. The flathead sometimes will sit up in there or right on the edge of those root systems. So having a weedless setup, these little plastics or the little headlock setups with a plastic on the back, that's going to come into action, I think, fishing stuff like this. So I'm going to fish like that and um, just get a feel for that. I've got um, one of the other options. This is what I showed you before. One of these little diesel minnows on a snake lock system. So throwing that up into the cover, even over those trees, if you miscast it, and then being able to just pop it back and fish in the shallows without getting caught up on the weed, that's going to make a bit of a difference. A lot of the flathead will sit up in those zones. So just getting my head around which lures are the best for that sort of stuff. I'm going to do that for the next little bit and get a feel for that. But um, weedless plastics certainly have their, their place for fishing for these flatheads. Uh, I'm on. Believe it or not, I'm on to a beauty. <laughs> and that shows you exactly what I mean. That's the first cast of the whole thing. Bloody hell, it's a giant too. You should see this. It's a big, <laughs> it's a big Haiti. Bloody hell. <laughs> My steering better get better than that in the bloody classic. Have a look at this. <laughs> I was not expecting any of that. <laughs> oh, oh, I've dropped it. Oh my god. Why does that happen in the pre-fish? That was an 80 something. Just fishing with that. Bloody hell. Well, hopefully I've left him here. I've left him here for next week. Well, that shows you how effective that can be. That's fishing with a little snake lock setup. So, um, that's what I'm going to be doing. Well, that works. On to the next one. How aggressive was that? <laughs> that's what happens when you come out to try and film a little tactics video. I don't even know what to say now. <laughs> Does it get any better than that? It's not going to be that easy in the competition, I'll give you the tip. But that was an 80 first cast. Jesus. Oh well. Might be using this lure in the classic then. There you go. One of the Z-Mans. That's a 4 inch uh, diesel minnow. Oh, it's still crashing around. There's something just busting over there. I'll just give that a flip. Thought I had a snare go. I <laughs> thought, Jesus, I'm talking about these bloody, these weedless lures, and I've hooked a snag straight up. The cast pinned over one of those little logs there, and I was like, oh, great demo on how to cast into the snags. Just wrap yourself around a twig, and then hook a giant. Might just call me brother to get him excited. Listen to this, I'm gonna have to, um, he, one of the reasons I love fishing with my brother is because he gets so jacked up. You watch this. Get him on the speaker. See what, see what happens. Hey mate. What's um, just out. Took took a while because I went and got a coffee, but just started um, going through a little bit of the tactics. Yeah. First cast. Mate, mid eighties. Mate, I wasn't, man. I was, I'm fishing an area that I had an idea of, that I was like, yeah, I might, 
I might just give that a check and see what the tide height's going to be, whether there's water there. First cast, I literally... How deep? How deep? Uh, it's got about a metre of water on it, but um, I didn't get the fish in, but I got, it, I got a real good look at it, so it's sitting back there for when we come in on Tuesday, Wednesday. You're kidding me. You excited or what? Hey, that's insane. My, hey, it better not be the bogey. First cast in the pre-fish and then you don't see another one. <laughs> oh, bro. Anyway, I thought I'd ring you because I know you get more excited than anyone, man. I'm, I'm, call, I'm calling it 90 because, like, OA80s is pretty much 90. Man, that ice, you shouldn't have called me because now I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> you are right. Yeah, yeah, frothing, mate, frothing. So, anyway, I just wanted to get you excited for next week. And I'll give you, I'm going to keep fishing and I'll give you a call a bit later. All right, mate, well played. All right. I can't wait to have you out on the boat with me, though, mate. Yeah. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope we don't drop them in the classic. Oh, God. Anyway. I, I, I was stuffing around trying to move the camera to try and capture it, so that won't be happening next week. It'll be straight in the net. <laughs> All right, dude. See you, mate. How good is it when you got a, a bloke that you like fishing with that gets that excited? We need to do more fishing. All right, let's go. So, uh, weedless plastics in the sticks or in the pneumatophore roots popped out, left there on the edge. Tick. That's something I'm going to try this uh, bloody classic. This is a technique that I think is going to really work. This is what I just showed you before. These TT jig heads called snake locks, you can rig a plastic, probably one of these Z-Man minnows. Just love the way they sit on these jigs. And you can throw it in. This is like these crazy root systems that catch absolutely everything. And I'm throwing it up onto the sand and you can just pop it through or slow roll it when it's in the water. You can just slow roll it through all of those all of those little roots and you don't get caught up and then you sit it on the edge of this stuff like obviously if you're in the main part of the system it might be deeper than this but once it comes through those root systems and sits in the current the little jig the little weight goes down into the sand and it looks like a little minnow a little fish a bit of bait just sitting in with trying to feed on the on the sand there so it's a deadly technique and it just allows you to fish this stuff through really heavy cover, through the weeds and all that sort of stuff. Come over here, let me show you. I can bring this thing through the weeds. Like over here, this is, it's really low tide now, like there's nothing in here. But um, let me just show you what it's about. It makes such a big difference. There's a lot of stuff that's sort of weeded up at the moment. And you can see the mats of weed over there. And it's a real problem. It's so, so frustrating as a lure fisherman to continuously bring your lure in with weed on it. I'll just see if I can show you what I mean. So there's mats of weed here. And I can just throw this little snake locks and just slow roll it through the weed. It's a pretty good technique if you're fishing in a little bit deeper water. This is like less than 10 centimetres deep. But to slow roll something through weed that thick and still bring it back and have it completely free of weed, that's a game changer. It's a really, really good idea. Let me show you the little the little system. The ones that I'm running are like a 2.0 a and a sixth of an ounce. I'll show you what they look like so you can see if you're gonna go get some in the shops. They're called snake locks by Tackle Tactics. You can see my, my little Z-Man's really holding onto it, which is ideal, that's what you want. Don't want to wreck my little plastic, but 
you can see, you should be able to see that there. It's got a little chin lock there, that little weight that holds the Z-Man in place. And then that little system there, that little bent around bit of wire holds the hook on. And the fact that it's free moving means that it just sits so much better in the water at rest. And that's when that big flatty took me. So that's how I like to fish these things. If you've got a system like that that allows you to just start to fish and leave stuff in that's going to move around in the current and that jig is buried it's deadly so hopefully that's a technique if you haven't used it before you can get into some of that sort of fishing and you'll um you'll get some success i i like to sort of pull the pull the plastic right up when i'm fishing it and that's how i did it so it's closer to that jig head to the to the lead and it still moves freely but it just means in the silhouette of the bait it's not sort of disjointed i'm not sure if you pick that up but there's a fair bit of bait movement stuff's like scooting away and this is what i tr wanted to try and find is just some areas where the bait holds up that's off the bank when the tide's up so um one of my frustrations in I've, I've only really got this morning to come out and try and get an idea if i was here to fish it at low tide i'd probably get off the boat and start walking around and scoping some areas as well but i'm out here at high tide and um yeah just found an area like there's big puffs of stuff that's coming up and um, that's giving me some idea of how i'm going to fish it when i come back next week so there's edges in here i just sort of wanted to drift in and see what's here and even though I'm spooking fish now, it's not about today really, it's about next week. So, um, yeah, this gives me some idea, like there's these crazy root systems that sit here in these areas. The, the flathead sometimes will sit in the gaps of this. And, yeah, it's definitely going to be hard because the bait can get, like the bait's going to sit right up in there. So maybe on the run out tide, you're going to be able to get some feeding fish in here. But um, right at the moment, I reckon it's probably a little bit, a little bit quiet in a section like this, unless you've got the bait sitting off, which is then, you know, that's prime. A little bit of wind on the surface. Next week, there's predicted to be these sort of 10, 15 knot southerly and easterly winds, which is perfect for me. It just hides your approach a lot. I'd, ideally, I'd like to fish stuff out of the kayak. I love fishing for flatties out of the kayak. But uh, when you're out fishing on the Broadwater and Moreton Bay, there's just too much area to cover. And that's how I'm gonna play it, I think. I'm just gonna sort of try and hit some key spots and move a fair bit and just try and keep hitting um, key spots, hopefully around that tide, the, the time and the tide sort of working on that area. But I don't, it's sort of a bit unknown because I don't really know, you know, how, how many fishermen are gonna be out there. I'm sort of guessing that every spot's just gonna have people fishing it and you're just going to be fishing on top of people for the week. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a challenge in itself. But I think if you're sort of, if you're presenting, if you're presenting the flathead with a, either a different retrieve or a different lure, uh, then, you know, you're, you're a chance at getting fish that have already been fished over the top of. So that's part of the reason why I think maybe the crossfire, definitely that big slap sticks, um, the rip stops by Rapala, just with their finish, especially you know, on a day like today, something like that. I reckon, you know, they're, they're probably gonna be the types of lures that are gonna help get it done after the first sort of morning of fishing when people are throwing uh, a lot of the same sort of stuff. In these quieter areas, I love these big slapstick setups. And I'll have to put a video up on how I like to rig these because there's a fair bit in, in sort of prepping it the way that you want it so it can fish really well. You can see I've got like a twist lock, a big, um, this is a VMC hook, I'll see if I've got them here. Jeez. That's it there, strategic hooks by VMC and it's like a 7.0. So you run that big weedless hook up the front it's a, it's a wide, ga uh, wide gap hook. What are they called? Heavy duty wide gap. So that's, that's what I'm running up the front of this thing. 
and then I've just got a Stinger treble attached with 20 pound. But in, in really quiet zones like this, this is super subtle, this, this stick bait. that last time and then caught an 80. <laughs> Overshot my mark, hit the tree, wrapped it around it, dropped it and caught an 80. You can probably tell I'm, I'm well away from the main area of the of the broad water um, but this is really just to catch these fish that are on the move and feeding pretty hard so that are coming in with that tidal run that are coming up and feeding on the bait that are getting into these little shallow creeks so that's one option and it's it's probably not the best option for chasing flathead I reckon like out on those banks and that sort of thing is the best option really but I'm not really that keen to go and, and um, fight for a weed bed or, or, or try and put myself you know a bit behind or try and jam in front of someone to try and get a fish so this is probably a tactic that's going to come in for me over the weekend. scorer that's up around the 600 this is ridiculous to be honest I'm not going to fish this well in the classic now you I was just sort of thinking you might be able to see it I'll see if I can bring it up so you can get a look at it oh brilliant stuff I reckon I reckon I need a better net than this for the classic I reckon oh this fish might be like 55 I reckon Go. but you can see that it was taken like Shocking bitch. <laughs> That's why it's better to fish with a partner in a team. Oh, I might be over the 55. This is good. This is good. All right, come down and have a look at this. Let's see what I can pick up with this video, man. All right. Now, how can I do this? All right, here we go. I'll put it in here. But. This is the kind of tactic change that I reckon can make a little bit of a difference, especially when it's really pressured and super busy out on the um, out on the on the main area of the system. Let's have a look. Have a look. Now this bit of kit, if you haven't seen these before, these are RCD rollers. It's a sick little setup for uh, measuring your fish. So that's ballpark oh, it's over 60 so it's that's just cracked the 60 and you can see it was taken on the slap sticks it's caught the back stinger and that's how I like to fish it let me just get a glove and I'll um I'll release it oh my gloves in there <laughs> my gloves in there there we go. Now I'll give you a look at him. Come here, buddy. Oh, jeez, they're mad. Usually, sort of play them on a fairly light drag mostly so they don't carry on like this on the boat because they can do a bit of damage to themselves. I hate it. And you get them in the boat and they just carry on like crazy. All right, let me get this hook out. It's just going to pop out nice and easy. There we go. Alright, I'll show you that lure. I'll give you a look at this beautiful flatty over the 600. And this is what I'm after. I'll, you know, this is what I want for the classic. Something like that. Beautiful big flatty. That's a classic flatty. Alright, I'm chucking back. Go on, buddy. Off you go. Alright, come over and have a look at this lure. 
because these things are just dynamite. Chris Metcalf, he's put me on to these. There's a few other blokes that are using them there, they're gun. Silstar slapsticks in the nine inch. There's a short, a smaller version as well that goes really good. I've, I've given a handful of them to my kids at school and they've been getting big flatty on them too. So I'll, um, if you haven't seen how to rig them, right, I'll just try and show you quickly, but you can see that's the stinger that got it and it's a size six owner. And then it's uh, rigged on this, this is a heavy duty wide gap hook by VMC. It's a 7.0, so you can get them um, and you put a twist lock up the front to hold it, you might be able to see that. But I really like this colour um, in the clearer conditions, which is it's pretty much what we've been having lately. The Lumo and the white are great, but this colour with these clear conditions without, all, without any rain, um, like good soaking rain that really dirties the water, I reckon these are the go. So um, I, was, I was sort of just going to talk through the point of just going to talk through the point of coming in and fishing zones that aren't getting hit like look at this this is more like a jack spot or if you're chasing like brim and things like that up in the shallows in these mangroves but if you fish slowly and hit little drains and drop-offs in these areas that are intertidal this is completely dry at low tide you're still a really good chance at getting those moving feeding fish so anyway this that was a real confidence fish for me because i was just coming up here going is it worth the time to hit this stuff? And um, a 60 like that, it's definitely worth the time. Now I'm starting to get nervous that these big fish are gonna get caught today and not next week. Anyway, we'll, we'll try a different zone, try something else. Um, but yeah, this is, this is good confidence stuff because often it's the high tide where people really struggle. The sun's super high in the sky now, you can see that. Like it's, yeah, it's sort of 10, 10.30, yeah. Um, and the bite's still there. All right, let's keep going. These big crossfires have been a favorite flathead lure of mine for a while now, and I'm gonna be using it this classic. They don't get the numbers, there's no question about it. These bigger ones, they tend to turn a fair few of the fish away, the smaller models, but they are probably one of the best at getting the big ones off the flats, I reckon. So um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be chasing those bigger fish and these crossfires, they're great in the wind. You can cast it against the wind if you need to. And um, just working it on the surface, really aggressive. You almost can't get too aggressive with it. You can see the rod tip action that I've got with it there. And then giving it that time to stall over the flats, even in the wind, I think they've got enough presence to be able to pull those big fish up. So. These kind of conditions is what we're going to get. We're going to have, you know, during the middle of the day, there's going to be these sort of 15 knot winds. So being able to cast and not getting too frustrated in these heavier winds is going to be part of the game, I reckon. So for me, using big lures like this, um, also maybe like this Affinity series, being able to throw something like this, another really big presence on the flats in the wind, I reckon they're just such a visual presentation. They're a big bait that those big flathead are just willing to get up and move for. That big splash that you can see out there, I really like that. I think it's a, it's a big part of the puzzle for these bigger flathead. They're super wary about what's on the flats and what's moving and jumping. And I'm not afraid at all to be throwing these bigger baits and landing it right in the zones where I think these big flathead might be. So I fish this one with the weights off it. It might be different if I'm working edges and ledges and things like that. I'll put the weights on, the interchangeable weights, I'll screw them on. But over the sand flats where it's a foot, two feet deep, hoiking a big swim bait around like this with a swim bait rod. I really do, do enjoy it, it's sort of like hard in mouth stuff because whatever comes up, it's a big fish that's pretty confident it can take that thing down. The great part about, I like these white ones, you can see it from a mile away so you can see how you're working it. And so you can give it that time to fade and if you see those big shadows come up behind it, you can just give it a couple of little tweaks just to keep it moving keep those big fish interested. It's a great way to get them to bite.
So hopefully there's a few techniques there that um, might put you on at your flathead fishing. That's what I'm going to be doing in the, uh, in the tournament amongst a lot of others. What I might do now is go through some of the lures that I've got in my box that are some of the other options. There's a heap in there, but um, yeah, I just want to be able to give you as many options as you have to be able to chase some flathead yourself. So I'll take you through that and um, maybe some of the gear and then yeah, we'll wrap things up. Super wary of these really big eagles. You don't want to not be watching when one of them comes down to grab your big swim bait. Because <laughs> you might lose your swim bait and then geez, it'd be sad to hook an eagle. So make sure you're watching. Look, they're out there now, they're watching it. They, they want to get it. It draws in so much attention, these big things. Oh, they're massive, some of these eagles out here. One of the other options I'm going to be using, this big Rapala ripstop. It comes in a shallow and a deeper version. That's the deeper one there. But these things, the finish on them is just insane. They've got this internal foil, which when you fish it like a jerk bait and you throw it out onto these flats, it casts quite well. And then when you're just fishing it across the flats with a little twitchy retrieve, it just throws out light just beautifully, just like a whiting on the flats like a little whiting that's trying to get away. And you can see the way that I'm retrieving it. It's not a straight wind. I'm just throwing it out, tick, 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 and then just sitting it there and giving the flathead time to come over, have a look at it and make their decision. And these bigger jerk baits, this is like, this is over a hundred mil, this one. These have got the potential to catch those big fish as well. So I've got some other options, some really big ones in that I'll talk about over the, the course of the Flatty Classic. And, um, and I'm definitely going to be using them, but these diving lures, and not just the 50 mil ones, I reckon are a great option for pulling some bigger fish. Especially if you're fishing sections like this, where it is just sand, you don't want to be pulling weed in on the trebles all the time, you're better off going with like a weedless plastic or a plastic with an upturned hook. But where you've got these open sand banks, I reckon stalling and shining one of these jerk baits, I reckon that's a good option as well. So I'll be doing that this tournament. There's a lot of sections like this out in the Broadwater and I think they probably get overlooked. But if it's like a, a passage of, for bait, um, it's definitely worth your time. So fishing with one of these bigger diving lures that can get down, throw up puffs of sand and then just sit and fade like a whiting and flash off like a whiting. I think the flathead like that. So I'll definitely be using these Rapala rip stops during the tournament. I've ju actually, you've just had a flatty come up then. Like right behind me. That's what I'll be using. And I'm just throwing it on a on a spinning outfit with fairly light line. Like this is just six pound, and I've got like an I think it's a ten pound leader, but you could go a fair bit short, uh, lighter than that. Maybe six and six would be alright. All right, you can see the props up, and uh, I'm, I'm just moving through the shallows here. I don't know if you can pick that up, but I'm in super shallow, muddy stuff, and I've just been patrolling a couple of banks. The tide's just started to run out, but I wanted to get an idea of how much water's going to be on this next week, and also, like, that mangrove section, the lined bank, you know, now that their, their feet are starting to dry out, those mangrove roots, it's starting to recede out of there. All the bait's going to have to be coming out. So that's potentially a bite time that I want to be around for. Um, so whether it's the incoming and I get it and then there's a lot more water in here, it might make it harder to fish during that time. But I definitely wanted to have a look and see what's underneath me as well and where the flathead are going to be sitting. See if there's any little drains or pockets I can pick off and know where they are before I'm right on top of them spooking them. Um, so yeah, that's all part of it. Just scoping some areas out and getting to know some banks. So I haven't, 
like I said at the start, I haven't been here for ages. Eh? It's, it's literally been once or twice in the last two or three years. But that gives me something to fish with anyway. All right, we'll go wrap this up. Just got back to the ramp. I'm sort of running short on time now, so I might go through all the lures and uh, the gear that I've got when I get home and put that in the next video. Um, I didn't really expect to go fishing and, and do as much fishing as I did. I sort of spent about an hour and a half, two hours um, flicking around in the end and sort of scoping as I was going. Uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to not fish and just scope. I don't do tournaments very often really or ever anymore. I mainly just um, just fish when I get the chance in my own time. But uh, So I'm not really versed in this, uh, this pre-fish game. So it didn't go as well as, as I'd sort of hoped in terms of getting out and scoping a lot of country. But uh, it went way better than expected with the small amount of fishing I did to get some nice fish. So anyway, I'll see you in the next video with uh, some of the gear. And if you enjoyed watching this, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got loads of stuff. I've got um, this full length films that you can download through my page. I'll put links in below for that. But there's loads of tips and tactical videos and uh, fishing adventures on my page. And there's a lot more coming in the next few weeks. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.